Cooler Master have updated two of their lines, the Spawn, now known as the MM520, and the Mizar, now known as the MM530, and I like what I'm seeing. Once again, they're trying a new plastic, which has a matte UV coating. It's fairly smooth, but has some rough texture to it, which might help with grip, especially if sweat is an issue. I found it comfortable, but more importantly, they've added some textured rubber to the sides of the 530, and just one side of the 520. For the shapes, both feel comfortable and allow for good grip, but they are quite different. Here's a tour of each, starting with the 520, the first thing that is unlike most mice is that it has a rest for your ring finger, and it, like the buttons, has a nice comfort curve. The right side's grip is also curved, in a way that makes it comfortable and easy to pick up. The left side follows the same principle, but also has an outward curve at the base. This can keep the thumb slightly raised off the pad, and even make for awkward grip for some, but given the 2.5cm space between the side buttons, most thumbs should fit here. Looking from the base, we can see the unique shape, and the sensor is fairly centered, but that puts it slightly behind the little finger. And of course there are three large mouse feet, which glide smoothly over cloth and hard pads. Although they feel like they have a little more resistance than some. The button slope is gradual, and the hump is more toward the back, with a steep but nicely rounded slope. I usually recommend mice that are 60% of your hand measurements. That's best for aim. This has a grip width of around 7.5cm though. Height of about 4. And the length is under 12. So this is a niche mouse meaning it's for people who want a specific type, and I'd say it's mostly for comfort. My 18 by 9 cm hand feels comfortable in all three grip styles, so this might be suitable for palm grip under 19 cm, claw potentially up to 21 cm, that's depending if you like having your palm resting on the back of the mouse or not, and fingertip grip, maybe above 17 cm, but under 21. Now the 530, a much safer and more common shape, and for most people I'd say it's better for aiming. On the left there's a fairly big thumb curve, but it does slope outward vertically to help with grip. Combine that with the rubber and it shouldn't slip at all. It's fairly comfortable, but sometimes these rubber grips can feel a bit odd compared to the smooth surfaces. Same on the other side, including the vertical curve. But on the back, it curves outward as a rest for the little finger. This makes sense for people who haven't adjusted their grip to go further inward, or that have bigger hands. From the back, we can see it tapers to a point on top, and I've actually found a flatter top is more comfortable, but this is still quite good. And unfortunately, there are barely any comfort grooves in the buttons. I prefer the button shape on the 520. Looking at the base, we can see the shape clearer, along with two large mouse feet, which also glide very well. And the sensor position is in line with my thumb when I hold it, so even though it's technically not centered, it still feels like it is. The button slope on this is also gradual, and the hump is more toward the back, with a moderate slope. The measurements for this are just under 6cm at the fingers, about 12.5cm in length, and 3.9cm in height. Ideally, I think this would suit 19 by 9.8cm hands, but for comfort I'd say under 19cm would suit palm grip, between 16 and 20 for claw, and fingertip between 17 and 21. There isn't much to compare with the 520, but the 530 could be like a smaller death adder in a way, but the shapes are more flat, and I would say not quite as comfortable. These are both larger medium mice though, as you can see next to the others in the photos. In use, the 3360 sensor performs as you would expect from a top optical. It's the same in both mice, so I'm just going to show the 530 in action. I can't make it spin out, even using the tilt slam test, and zooming in using 1600 dpi, it tracks pixel by pixel and does it smoothly. It feels fairly responsive, although it might be the mouse feet making it drag a little. They're smooth but maybe grippier than the G703. As far as I can tell, there's no acceleration or deceleration. Liftoff distance is under 1 DVD on both hard and soft pads, and I had no issues with the sensors during a lot of playtime. Confirming the performance with a line test, there's no jitter, angle snapping, skipping, or sensor rattle, and the liftoff movement is well controlled. Using the human and bomb testing to check latency, neither test is accurate, but together they give an indication, and it seems there's about 3 or 4 millisecond difference with the G703. Nothing to worry about, that's actually a good performance, and no problem in game holding down multiple buttons together. Checking the buttons, here is a listen to the clicks of each.
Left and right feel a bit lighter on the 520, but both seem to have a good resistance. It's just the left on the 520 that bounces a little. Mine feels a bit defective. Right click is good though, but the good news is I had no accidental clicks on any of the buttons. The wheel is kind of hard to press in on the 520, but fairly easy on the 530, almost feeling more like left and right. Both wheels are about the same, kind of lumpy and with some steps. They're not amazing, but they are decent. The side buttons on the 520 have a bit too much travel. They're smooth, plasticky, and a bit loud. I prefer the ones on the 530, with a smaller travel, quieter, and better quality sound. The same is true for the DPI buttons in terms of loudness, but the feel is a bit better on the 520, more of a click, so you can definitely know you've hit it. For the overall build, they actually feel like they're good quality. This is a big improvement over previous Cooler Master mice. When tapping and shaking them, there is only a very, very slight rattle, which is very common. If they can continue to build on this kind of quality, especially on something like the Master Mouse S, I'd be looking at putting it in the top 10. Even the cables seem fairly flexible and smooth. They're a bit thick, but that's not bad. They fit in the Zoe Mouse Bungie and Cougar Bunker. Where they're going to be let down a little for most competitive gamers is the weight. At about 102 grams for both with a little bit of cable, they're slightly on the heavy side, but they're only that heavy because of market research. Apparently, a lot of people say they want a mouse that is 100 grams, so they added an extra weight. The new copies of these mice will have replacement feet in the box, so you can take the weight out yourself. And if you don't get a new copy, you can contact Cooler Master via Facebook, and they will send some out for you. They sent me these, so that's why I'm removing the weight. It's fairly simple, you just remove the feet, take out the screws, and then open the mouse up. Inside, you'll see the weight screwed into the top, so make sure you have two screwdrivers, one really small, and the other about this size. So without this weight in it, it can go down to about 88 grams. And at this weight, they're definitely contenders in my top mice list. They feel much better to me for competitive gaming. In the software, you can set up macros, which detects keyboard, mouse, and even mouse wheel. You can alter the buttons to mouse functions, keyboard, macro, multimedia, and some extras. And tactics allows you to essentially double the amount of functions. The LEDs are easily controlled, and they give you a few options from static to color cycle. The color accuracy is good with a smooth cycle. You can set four DPI levels, from 100 to 12,000, in steps of 100. And they have onboard memory, so you can set profiles too. Now if I could only have one mouse, would I be happy to own either of these? Mostly yes. I'd give them an 80% on that, which is fairly high. There's a lot to like, and while the shapes and materials are quite good, they're missing the extra wow factor of, say, the Master Mouse S. Had the quality been better on that, I would definitely have wanted to use that one. But the build quality on these is much better, so these are higher recommendations in that regard. And that leads me to the conclusion. They're really good mice. Cooler Master is going in the right direction, but the shapes can only take this quality so far. I still think the better shapes are on the Master Mouse L and S. If we can get this kind of quality on those mice and maybe even make it better, Cooler Master could see themselves very close to the top. As I said, I like what I'm seeing. If it wasn't for the weight inside, I'd rank them higher, but it can be removed, so I'll still give them a high recommendation. So it's not that these mice have anything really wrong with them, it's just they could be better. That's true for most things, but the top mice are still ahead of these in more ways. They're contenders though, so definitely worth checking out. Hope that helps, big thanks to Cooler Master for sending them out for a review, and if you want to help support the channel, I'll leave the usual links in the description. Subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.